Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're taking you down the river. We're gonna take you down the rapids. We're gonna lose some people off the boat. Oh no. And we're not gonna be able to find them. Maybe it's my friend from college. Oh wow. Or maybe it's my friend from internet who was also my friend from college. Well, uh, you consider me your friend from internet? <laughs> First of all, you didn't even say the internet. Um, I was kinda hoping you would be wearing your Willie Nelson shirt that I got you. Um, you know, I went to the Palomino Festival. And yeah, and every day you show up with a new damn t-shirt. I'm like, how many t-shirts did you buy at this festival that I was also supposed to go to, but I was too COVIDed yeah. to go to it. So I went Pretty bitter. Uh, without you. Every day you show up with a t-shirt and it's like rubbing it in my well, face. Let me say two Just things. Just take the t-shirt off and rub it in my face. Number No, you don't want that. Number one, this is a shirt that I did not, I did not get the shirt at Palomino Festival. I got this shirt while I was on my vacation in Santa Barbara at a surf shop because this is like a collab. It's just between a Shotgun Willie. Will, between Willie Nelson and I think Pac Sun, so, some brand. Does it say it? Bri Brixton. Brixton. That's different than Pac Sun. Yeah, but yeah, they would. Be, Brixton would be sold at Pac Sun. But the T-shirt that I got you, I saw this awesome Willie Nelson T-shirt that said Willie's Reserve, and I was like, Oh yeah, that Link will love that. But that's that's like where he people go to like. Shoot game, right? No, it's Willie's weed brand. I did not know at the time that this is Willie Nelson's cannabis company, <laughs> Willie's Reserve. So just be careful where you wear it, Link. Be careful where I wear it? Be careful where you wear it. Probably shouldn't wear it on the internet. I haven't worn it. Have Matter of fact, even, I threw even, it away. Have you even tried it on? Uh, I usually launder my shirts first. Interesting. I guess normal size people can do that. Cause you're a, it's a, I don't, I wear a large T-shirt, but I I want it to fit medium point five. This is funny because this morning, I put okay. I saw this shirt hanging up. My wife had washed it. We used to have this agreement that you cannot wash and dry my T-shirts, but that was back when T-shirts were a little bit skinnier, a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. And then I upgraded to the XL, and I was like, oh, XL's basically it, well, the style has changed, right? So they've gotten a little bit bigger. She washes. She washed this, and I have a pretty good sense of just looking at a shirt on a hanger and knowing if it's gotten too short. And I was like, "Oh no, she she messed my shotgun Willie shirt up." But I put it on, and it actually fits okay. Because I, before I put it on, I was like, "Am I gonna have to start getting two XLs and then laundering them and drying them real hard?" Mm -hmm. Apparently not. Shotgun Willie is a great song. I think it's also the name of the album. Sits around in his underwear, and it's um. I think it became one of his monikers after after that uh, song came out. Yes, right. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about that we went back to Colorado. Yeah, we did. We're just kind of doing that. We're, we, we're you know what? We're really into the Denver airport and all the conspiracies around it. I'm fond. And of, we want to visit the I'm Denver airport Colorado. as much as possible. I'm not fond of the Denver airport. It's rather large. We're not gonna really get into the There's a red-eyed Bronco. The conspiracy the theories, but if you want to, if you're that kind of person, uh, you know me, I'm not into conspiracy theories unless I'm doing a bit on GMM. There's tunnels. Um, there's all kinds of theories about this thing. It was built in 1995, I think. It cost $3 billion more than the, the expected budget, which is a lot of money. It took a lot of extra time. Because so, they built a tunnel all the way to Fort Collins. So people are like, there's a tunnel that goes like 100 miles to Colorado Springs, I think is the oh. theory. Uh, there's like, un, the Illuminati supposedly uses it. The oh, most interesting cool. thing is there there is that big Bronco that's out, first of all, it's in the middle of nowhere outside of Denver, just on the plains, right? Yeah. And then there's this big giant blue Bronco, of course, like the Denver Broncos. It's their mascot. But this thing is massive and has these lit up red eyes that don't always, you, you don't, it's like you have to drive past it and at a certain angle, boom, it's like the thing just kinda lights up and looks directly at you. It lights up? Well, it's, they're, all, they're always I was lit. driving the rental car, so oh, I, I didn't was get looking. to see the eyes. And the thing is, you know what the name of the thing is? Blucifer. Really? Yes, and the artist, this is freaky. Only that statue or the mascot for the football team? I think only that statue. Okay. The artist was killed by 
the statue while he was building it. Uh Uh-uh. How? A piece of the horse fell off and cut an artery in his leg and he bled out. No, uh uh-uh, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't making this stuff up, man. Wikipedia, yeah, that's- somebody else is making it up. No, 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 that's, so there's a lot of things. There's all these weird, there's images around the airport and there's people think that there's some sort of Nazi thing going on. Uh, I, I think that all of that, and, and, and interestingly, the Denver airport, like the CEO of the Denver, if you go on the Denver airport website. The CEO of an airport? They have, yeah. It's a big job. They have decided to embrace, not the Nazi part, but the conspiracy theory stuff, because they were like, we spent some time trying to dispel these things, and now we just embrace it, and it's just part of the fun of the airport. Because there's like gargoyles around the baggage claim or something to like ward off evil spirits, but it's just, you know, it's just like architectural decisions or whatever. But that Bronco killed the artist. Wow. That's like the desk of GMM. Killing, killing crushes. one of us, man. I Which hope we're could rolling happen. on that, or the round table of dim lighting. If you had to be killed by the GMM desk or the round table of dim lighting, which and, and it was, and you were gonna, it was because an artery was cut and you were gonna bleed out. Which oh one would gosh. you choose? I don't think the There's round no table of dim edges. lighting could cut you. It's round. The GMM desk. Could probably cut you with one of those corners. It's dim in here, though. You you might there's 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 a hazard with visibility. That's true. So anyway, we we enjoy the Denver airport. It's a beautiful airport, other than the conspiracies. So this this trip was a long time in the works. Just to give you a little background, when we on this podcast started, we released our lost years. This is pre pandemic, like I mean like weeks before the pandemic really hit in 2020, uh, we released The Lost Years. You have a little hair that I feel like needs to be addressed. Oh yeah? Got it. Did I address it? Yep. Okay. Um, and you know, our- For those of you listening, it was not a pube. Our friends- It was um, on his head. We gave, you know, our, our friends back home, you know, they're, 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 uh, their faith is, Still intact. Now I'm not going to speak for them. Friends back. Well, there are, only one of them. They're not back, back home. home. But like our friends from college that we, you know, we were in and out of touch with. Like we're still we're still friends, but we're not like actively talking to them all the time. Like active friends pre pandemic. But at different points when we were visiting back home, at least one friend, like I gave him a heads up, gave Harm a heads up that like, hey, we're going to talk about our spiritual deconstructions on the podcast, I'm, I'm approaching this with some trepidation. And you know, so I was able to have some good conversation because you know, we experienced uh, being involved in Campus Crusade and like our, our college years and all that stuff with them. Like yeah. these were our closest friends. So it's like giving them a heads up, kind of telling them it's coming and um, just the general response was of support. You know, and like, hey, you know, I'm your friend. I'm I'm here for you. Yeah. I, I'm as as you go through this. Who knows how this is going to all come out? So that's when we that's when we started like reengaging and kind of upping the ante on our friendship. I think right before the pandemic. Then when the pandemic hit, well, no, before the pandemic hit, as the Lost Years podcasts were coming out, we had I believe we had a video chat or two where we were like talking to them about it. Because they were, you know, they said they wanted to support us, and it's one thing to say that thoughts and prayers, but it's another thing to say, "Hey, I, how are you doing? I'm sending you a text. Let's talk." And then, like, we're all getting on video chats and talking. Then, when the pandemic hit, we were like, it kind of shifted to being about talking about sh- our shared experience in the pandemic because you got harm in North Carolina, you got Greg, who you met Greg on this podcast um, months ago. Um, he's in Washington State, and uh, Tim was in uh, uh, St. Saint Louis. Saint Louis, Baltimore is what I was gonna say. St. Louis at the time, he's in New York State now, and uh, another friend in Japan. Yes. You know, and so in this group, we got, we got a guy who's like heading a seminary, we got a guy who's a, a full-time pastor, we got a guy who takes pictures of, uh, Real estate properties, yes, but is very involved in his church, you know. So like that—that's their—that's where they're coming from. 
but we were we were such good friends in college, and then the pandemic like really strengthened our friendship. And I remember early on, it was like, man, this is this is nice. This is a source of strength to be able to connect with these people. This is something we talked about over um, over many podcasts and like highlights of the year. I think uh, we brought it up. So it, our friendship got re- reignited. Who knew the pandemic would last so long? We would do a video well, chat every week, every couple of weeks. Pretty much did it from this the beginning. Is, okay, yeah, <laughs> fair point. <laughs> if you go back, yeah, they said, we're 2023, we're still gonna be thinking about this. But even early on, like the first six months of the pandemic, as we were like having these video chats, this idea started to percolate of, when this is over, we, we should all get together. We should yeah. do something. We and should I, like because I think that it's and a, and then we're like let's not let's not all get together in North Carolina. Boring. Let's have a tr- let's have a trip. But it's I think it's important uh, because I, I I do we're not this isn't the the point of the conversation is not to talk about the fact that we're in a different place spiritually and the nature of, of our friendship. We're just going to talk about the time that we had together. But I I do want to just address that a little bit because. I don't know, you know, I tend to engage more about this stuff than you do, right? Like yeah. I, if somebody says something to me on the internet about it or ask a question, I'll get into it. I, I, I enjoy kind of going back and forth with people who disagree with me about things um, a little bit. And so, you know, and I kind of give off the vibe that like I kind of still wanna talk about this. I mean, I'm releasing a damn album that's all about <laughs> my spiritual deconstruction, right? I'm kind of, yeah. I'm sort of in, I'm on, I'm in that camp. right? Uh, so I'm kind of inviting conversation. I'm inviting challenges and that kind of thing. Um, and and I do think that people might be like, "Oh, you guys have like sworn off anything to do with church or Christianity," or and and you may and, and may think that it, it impacts relationships and, and friendships. And I just think it's really interesting. And now it depends on the nature of the the person, right? Because there might be people who are like. You have made these public statements, and you have uh, established yourself in this particular position, and you're kind of in opposition against evangelical Christianity from a philosophical standpoint. Um, and therefore, I can't have a relationship with you. There are people who would take that stance, but that's not the stance that we've taken. I'm still in very close relationships with a lot of people who are still very much evangelical Christians, um, and I think that. You know, and I'm not going to speak for these dudes because I think that they can speak for themselves. I think that. And by the way, I I am too. I, I I got my, got my former church friends. I got a I got a few key ones. Yeah, and uh, you know, all I'm going to say is that while we definitely have disagreements about some fundamental things, it's like the foundation of our friendship is love, and that love is still intact, and that love surpasses. Our disagreements, and we can we like we 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 had a lot of really lively you know discussions or whatever. It's not it's not argumentative, and it's not like it doesn't get heated. I'm just it, it, it's we I think we all at least a certain set of us in this group kind of enjoy talking about these things and like talking about things from a philosophical spiritual standpoint or whatever. And it's just kind of a I think that these guys, I think what I'm trying to say is these guys are a great example of how. Christians can interact with people who have deconstructed. Yeah, and you know what? I, I think I have some thoughts about it, but I want to come back to it in the in like after going through the whole trip, because I think that kind of sheds light and perspective on on the thoughts that I have about it in response to what you're saying. Okay. So like, I think this is going in a good place. I just, maybe just I'll just put a pin in it. Just kind of come back to that. It's kind of a bookend thing. All right. The other way to look at this was. I mean, I, we just had this desire to get together and do a trip because like we were really in, enjoying reconnecting. And yeah, every kind, we talk about the pandemic so much, we talk about our lives, it's not like we talk about our spirituality constantly. It's, it's no. a, it, it, it moved into just being one of the many things we would talk about. Um, and then it, so the, the trip finally happened, you know? We, we said, let's meet in Denver. It could be a central airport for people coming from all over the place. And then um, we can, you know, let's get an Airbnb where everybody can have their own bedroom. I really appreciate I uh, found that. you making that determination. That was, that was a huge 
And what it's not easy to find when you got like five guys. You each need your own room. That's a big, that's a big house. Um, going outside of Denver, uh, we were near Idaho Springs, and we we're like, "What can we do around there?" Whitewater rafting, baby. This is perfect. This is a perfect like midlife college boys somehow still friends. Let's get back together. Let's do something a little death defying. You know, city slickers. Haven't seen it, but my understanding is that like. It's a midlife crisis. You haven't seen City movie. Slickers? I I would love to see it. It's just you know I'm a I'm a I'm a busy man. We didn't talk about GME in the first five minutes. Was that well, a, we can talk was about that it a stipulation? It's just, it's, was know. that a stipulation or is it just we have no, to say it's it twice? Just, it's an internal. Okay, thing. so so we're gonna say it. When so we I'll say it. it right now. I say so I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen sli- city, Slitty Slickers. <laughs> sli- <laughs> slitty Slickers. <laughs> That's different. That's porn. That's the, <laughs> mm, that's the porn version. I haven't seen that either. <laughs> city haven't, oh, speaking of which, <laughs> uh, Slitty sick, Slickers. Slitty. Sick that slit. <laughs> slitty <laughs> Slickers. Sickers. Slitty Sickers. Wow. Um, Good Mythical Evening is right around the corner. Yes, it is. And um, who knows? Maybe maybe we should watch that. <laughs> uh, that's a good transition. We got a lot of stuff planned. Get your ticket now for the live event exclusively on Moment House. Watch it as it's happening. Whatever happens, you will see. Yeah. It's gonna be R rated. There will be drinking. It's gonna be it's gonna be full of surprises for us, and we might have some surprises for you. September first. Mark your calendars. Clear your schedules. Go to goodmythicalevening.com and grab that ticket. Um, so yeah, we made plans to go whitewater rafting and hang out at this Airbnb and do some other stuff. And it, I mean, it it definitely felt like that kind of midlife, it, was it like City Slickers? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, probably, I think we are most likely, a we're probably actually a little bit older than the city slickers were. Billy Clis- Crystal, <laughs> Crystal. Yeah, <laughs> well, Billy Crystal <laughs> is the porn version. Porn version. <laughs> Billy Crystal. Stop it! I was trying to get it right. Hey man, you got to save some stuff for a good mythical evening. Um, I'm just warming up. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so e- the thing I was thinking was the dad energy yeah. that was kind of perme- permeating everything. Like when you got, when we all got into the SUV to go somewhere and like you made the, he was like, isn't it interesting to be here and to not have to say something like, does everybody have all this, the stuff they need? Has everybody taken a leak if you need to use the bathroom? Do you have your phone? Hey, right. When, when a bunch of dads get together who are the one, who are the ones who are constantly saying those things to their families, it's like everybody's just like, you don't have to worry about anybody. It was, everybody it was, just got themselves figured out. It was so great. And when we had to check out by 10 a.m., everybody's scrambling, doing their thing. Everybody's pitching in to like take the trash out and put the sheets in the right spot and the towels in the right place and this, that, and the other. And we all get in the rental car and I look at the clock, 10 a.m. on the dot, baby. Yeah, that would Full not have dad happened mode if, engaged. if I was with my family. Not a chance. And we would, I definitely wouldn't have a smile on my Which face. Which confirms I am not the problem. I'm not either. Because when left to my own devices, I get out of the place on time. Right. I'm not the problem. I'm not saying my beautiful wife is the problem. It's probably the children, but it could be my wife as well. I don't know, because I, I haven't experimented in that way to isolate her, I don't know. So it, it could it, be my beautiful wife's problem. It felt good. You know, and and everybody, everybody was pretty, pretty, pretty laid back. You know, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. S- some of us are. We we got different gradations of being laid back, but there's like, I was driving. That made me feel good. I actually felt like I'm driving. If you had to rank, I picked the place. The laid backness of of the group, one to five. Yeah. Um, who's the most laid back and who's the least laid back? Greg is the most laid back. And then next it may be, I don't, I'm debating between Tim and you. I think it's you. 
Um, it's definitely you because there will be times when I was driving and then all of a sudden Tim would be the one speaking up saying, uh, we just passed the grocery store that we were supposed to go to hmm. and if you don't, but the town that we're going to is up here and if you keep, if you go to that place first, if we go to that liquor store first and then come back to the grocery store, then it's gonna add 40 minutes to our trip and I was like, I did not know that, brilliant. Let's turn around. Right. So it, it takes a level of like, I'm actually, you know, I had a GPS on and then he's back there in the back seat with another one on, just like catching my errors, which is great. And then I would rank, uh, who's left? Me you and, and Harm. Harm. Oh, this is, this is, uh, and this so is a debate. You're, you're both Enneagram ones. Yeah. Which already. And, and we're the ones, who, I, I'm, it's between the two of us is the reason why the trip happened, let's be real. No, yeah, that this is. I think this is one of the. This is why different personality profiles, which we kind of analyze through the grid of the enneagram, but it just means different personality types. You, you need some ones in your. It's helpful to have some ones in your group just to make sure that the things the logistically everything goes perfectly get, get planned. Um, but, and since I was, but I was, you, but more you, planning things. But then you need some other other people in your group other non ones in your group so that you can actually have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't you can't have it all once. You got to set it up and then you got to spike it. I made a lot of the plans and then but Harm was the one who would be like whenever we found out it was Tim's birthday and he was like I want to eat a steak and then you're like we're going to get you a steak and then you kept throwing out steak places and then Harm would be like that's too far. You know, it's like he's got his He's got his moments of asserting that like bad idea not doesn't fit within the parameters of perfection, which I appreciate, you know. I I felt like I didn't have to be the one to evaluate everything. And because I was kind of the leader. I was the leader. Okay. <laughs> I was the driver and I knew the itinerary. I wasn't really the leader, but I felt like that there were checks and balances between Harm and Tim. I'm going to put I'm gonna I'm gonna put Harm at number one. I'm gonna put me at number two. Okay, that's and interesting. And then I'm sure I'm gonna hear from him later. Uh, okay. Speaking as uh, uh, an innocent bystander, maybe we were tied. Um, yeah, I you know I think my assessment is that while Harm is much more of a one-one than you are a one-one, right? Because okay, you are. Incredibly disorganized and forgetful, and and like absent-minded in a way that most ones don't. Like you lose your keys. You come to work. You, like you, yesterday, you came to work. Oh, I left my laptop at home. You come to work. You usually don't have your ID. If we need to go someplace and we and you need an ID, you're like, ah, yeah, my IDs. But, but me being a one only translates into then I just felt like a failure. But harm is he, like he's comp he's a very buttoned up one. Yeah, he wears more buttons than me. Um. But so I, it's interesting. You have a chaotic energy, but you're also a one. So I think that when your oneness comes out, it can come out in sort of a semi-aggressive nature, in a way that harms never comes out. The only time that my that I got testy was when that last morning when we were stalling to go to the airport, we couldn't find anything worth doing after visiting Red Rocks Amphitheater, which was awesome. We had a few more hours and then it was just like, we, we, we got on scooters in like downtown Denver and it was like, that is not, I was not impressed. Well you made that very clear. I was not happy. I was like, you know what, next time, we're just gonna get up and we're gonna get on the plane and get the hell out. Yeah. Like that's like that's the other thing about, and maybe it's a one thing too, is that like the whole time I was assessing, what are we learning here for next time? And I found out the only person I could talk to that about was harm really? But there was and that he, moment. But that was nice. There was that moment. What are we gonna do next year? In the the next to last day, where I pointed out, where I was like, you said something like, you're like, some, you said something about this town that we're in. I was like, okay, in, in, in the past two hours, you have complained about <laughs> yeah, this town, this restaurant, this walk that we're on right now. Like you had complained about a lot of things. And that was your that was your what I would call your aggressive oneness. Should have out. never have gone to Aspen. 
I'm just saying. I think that's what it was. So I'm what I'm saying ultimately, I'm not throwing you under the bus, but I'm putting you at number one. Because while I think that harm is the most one one in a lot of ways, your the, the your the aggressive the aggressive oneness is more likely to come from you. It's just saying between the two of us. But I know how to cut loose listening. too, man. Well that's sure, yeah. I'm sure. I I know how to let it go. That's why I I let go so aggressively. I just like with a I I let go with reckless abandon. That is how I would describe it, aggressively letting go. But then it's like, it's just like, yeah. Like, the, I don't know how this Good Mythical Evening is gonna go. I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but it's, we're on the precipice of it. Like the last one, yeah, it was just like a big release of one, like letting go of oneness and just like, just being, just, just letting loose, man. Well, the people around you have to take cover. It's a, little, it's a little bit like a tornado, you know. Yeah, I try, I'm 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 trying to learn that, <laughs> so I'm getting better. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to just totally check out of oneness. I love that. And there was a hot tub. And there was a hot tub, which allowed for and that. a fire pit. Um, we need to promote some crap. And a lot of right? bourbon. Uh, let's do that, and then we'll get into the specifics. Um, over on the Mythical Society, we've been we've been doing um, these games. What 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 have we been calling it? The Society Showdown. Society Showdown. It's we've had Team Rhett versus Team Link. You can go on the Mythical Society and watch the previous iterations. We played an epic game of nasty food Jenga. Then we played our new uh, party game that you can get at Walmart or Walmart.com called We're Still Good. We played that. Had a lot of fun, and then but the the first of all, you've won. You're up by three I'm points. Winning. Um, but we have a live, ultimate society showdown. We're gonna ter- determine the the yes. final champion between Team Rhett and Team Link. I don't even know what we're what we're doing. A series of live competitions. Davin is dreaming this stuff up. He's our game master. Yeah, he was on Wheel of Fortune. Uh, and so you got to be a third degree member in order to watch the live finale. Only on the Mythical Society. Join Third Degree to watch this live finale. If you're listening to this after the fact, well, it's archived. You can go back and experience um, the live streams that we do on the Mythical Society anytime you want. Also, don't forget, uh, Third Degree Quarterly or annual members get the GMM Woven Blanket Collectible. MythicalSociety.com. Um, so I think we both. You want to talk about rafting? Yes, yeah, so we both had our our sights set on. Uh, we all did. The, rafting was, uh, you know, if you think about a central sort of the center of gravity of this, the expectations around this trip was around this adventure that we were going to go on rafting, and it was like, oh yeah, it's Colorado, like, you know, it's going to be super intense, and it's going to be. Well, I wanted to find one big. that was. I said adventurous, not boring. I want class four, I want class five. We've done the Upper Gauley in West Virginia, which has, I believe, class fives. It was very intense. I think it, doesn't it go to class six? It, yeah, let's just say yeah. I think at certain times, the Upper Gauley will go to a class six. So in Idaho Springs, uh, the Clear Creek runs through there, like right next right next to the, the freeway or whatever they call it. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful big creek. And so there's a lot of whitewater rafting on that. And so we did the upper Clear Creek and they said it was like a half day trip. Um, and we get there, we, you know, there's like six six rafts going out. We're in we're in a raft all our own. We got pictures to prove it. And um there were class fours and then a couple of what they called class fives at the end. No. There were there were only class fours? We did not go above a class four. Okay. I think dependent, it, it's, it's so dependent on the water levels and by the time that we were there, the water levels were starting to get lower. Basically the end of the season for this particular thing. Shout out to Amber, our guide, who is a mythical beast and uh, as we were settling in and getting our equipment, uh, she came up to us and said, pick me to be your guide. <laughs> she said, I'm the best. And I was like, yeah, well that's what I said. She said, pick me to be your guide and I said, are you any good? And she said, I'm the best. And then when we got on the river, she said, actually I have the least of experience of any <laughs> of, of anyone that you could have chosen today. 
But she was but great. But she's a, she was a mythical beast. She was a so. mythical beast, and she was a great rafting guide. Um, and she can't. We can't blame Amber for the nature of the water at that point. We because when, yeah. when we were planning this. We said we wanted the most intense rapid that we could get our hands on. We wanted yeah. to be out there for the longest. There was Kara was sending emails to different companies, and people were sending back. They're like, "How in shape are these guys?" Like, they were yeah, like, "These are like, good questions." They were picturing like Kevin Bacon from A River Wild. Are they experienced? It's you like, know? yeah, just tell like, them I mean, whatever well, they need yeah, to hear, like, for us to do this stuff. Because what I was kind of thinking secretly the whole time is that. We could create a situation that would feel like a thriller movie, like not not necessarily like the River Wild, where it turns out the guide is a murderer. Spoiler alert! Right, um, but or more, a banjo player, more like with a, with a bow and arrow. I wanted there to be some legitimate peril. Somebody's got to get rescued. Hell yeah, man! We got a podcast to make. Right, and you make it on the river. And uh, but then they were like, well. You can't really do the class fives now because that's not really active, but you, and we did all we could do, but <laughs> nobody got hurt. Well, and nobody died. She, Amber said, we can, we can go for a swim. We can topple this thing over at a certain point if you want to. And I was like, yes. And then Tim was like, N I'd rather not, you know? It was, it was cold and it, it was, was raining. It was and actually the most peril that he was we like, were in. And he played, a, it's my birthday card. I was like, seriously? Yeah. I was like, wait, can we at least take a vote? Amber's like, well, it's his birthday. I'm not gonna turn you guys over. That doesn't mean it's not gonna happen, but it, I'm, I'm not gonna do it, it on It almost purpose. happened. But the, the scaredest I was, um, was at the beginning. In the parking lot? <laughs> the parking lot, like trying to get into this water and there was a thunderstorm coming through and it was just like. Lightning. Lightning. On the ridge. Feeling very close. I was like, now I realized that you know, by definition, the river is the lowest point in the valley, so I guess unlikely to get struck, but water, I am though. the tallest person in this boat. <laughs> yeah, you know you what I'm are. saying? So the lightning's gonna find me first. And you were wearing that pointy metal hat. Yeah, right. Um, But it was really cool to like push off into the creek and then it's it's raining, it's thundering, there's a little bit of lightning. It really gave it a sense of peril. I like that. Cuz yeah. that was the easier part of the ride. And you know, we we were very responsive. We were, you know, you get a you get an a woman barking orders in the back of a boat and boy, we just we're aiming to please. Yeah, we are. We, we in fact were talking about how much we needed her to tell us how good we were at <laughs> Whatever she told us to yeah, do. Yeah, that was first. Like, what, what, what? The first question I asked her was, "How are we doing compared to the average boat?" <laughs> this is a very McLaughlin question to ask, and she was like, "You're doing average." Like she said, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" So, what do you mean? She's like, "Well, there's been a couple of times that not everyone has responded," and I think she was talking about me. I was like, "Well, I'm in the front of the boat. You got to speak louder, Amber." You blamed her. I blamed her. I was like, yeah. "If you say it loud enough, I'm the redster's ready to go." So then after that, I was really listening. Yeah. And then she said, okay, you're doing better than average. And me and Tim, who were both threes, we both felt good about that. Yeah. Um, and then you start you start going down. I mean, the whole trip, it said it was a half day trip, but I think they, they that's, count that's, a lot of other stuff. That's accounting for everything, like leaving your home and getting back. Yeah, so we were actually on the river for an hour, which was a disappointment. I'm just gonna be honest. It you know, been nice to an hour longer. is a short amount of time to actually do something when you gotta do something longer than it takes to prep for it and recover from it. Well, not recover from it, I'll oh, take that back. What about sex? But prep for it. Pre yeah, yeah, I think so. Is foreplay prep? No, foreplay is sex, man. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to figure Save out. Save that for sex timber. Okay, all right. Um. So yeah, and she, you know, because of the rain, we were moving faster, which, which was, was good. actually good. The water was coming up. So yeah, it was. I mean, we almost got dumped in the drink, and at the end, and those there's a couple of class fours there at the end, and they both like have the word beaver in the name, which is great. It's like you gotta really nail the slot of the beaver, right? And then you're like really, you're really diving into it, and 
your side, I mean, I thought you were going, like you were going backwards, like you were deep. Like the whole boat was like going in on you and in I think the we, upper we, right we hand corner. We got a pretty good action shot of that. Yeah, I'm not in most of these photos, so I don't really, I you, don't, you I don't were care kinda, much to show You were blocked a little bit. I was in the back. I got in the back of the boat thinking. It was the front. I mean, that's your problem. <laughs> I, knew it wasn't there. I got in the back of the boat thinking, you know what, I'll let the boys experience the front of the boat because there'll be a point when we switch and there's then. No, not if there's an hour, if it's an hour long. When we switch, then I'll be in the front of the boat for the best part. So I selfishly oh, so, yeah. deferred to make myself look better when get, really I was a bad I didn't person. get in the front of the boat by choice. It was the only spot left. It was like, okay, you guys don't wanna get in the front? I'll get in the front. Me and Greg got in the front. I wish I would've gotten in the front. My favorite part of those photos is Greg's face. <laughs> Progressively, like everyone had a different sort of like, you know, most of us were smiling. I kinda had a sort of a, like I put my, I do what my dad does when I'm getting ready to you go to him. You, you just lock your jaw. But I was still trying to enjoy myself, but Greg looked just astonished, f frightened in a couple, of, there's a couple of really great shots. We'll sh we're showing showing them to you right now. He's, done, over he's done a lot more death defying river action up there in Washington too. He's been kayaking too. and he's doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Which kind of brings me to the next point, which is we got a little taste of adventure but everybody wanted a little bit more of a taste. So the thing that we're talking about now is next time potentially doing one of these curated adventure trips where you've got like a guide who leads you through. Now they do something this overnight, of, they like do this a kind two of day, one night at least. Well, they do this kind of thing in Alaska, and I think Alaska may be too ambitious and too far away. But maybe there's something in the continental United States that doesn't require too much travel because we're all busy where we can get somebody to kind of lead us through. So I'm not saying I'm putting the call out there, but if you're like a mythical beast guide. And yes. Like, and I don't mean Let's like. Let's put the call out and there. And I don't mean like you want to be a guide. I'm saying that your job, you are you are a professional adventure guide. Yeah. Who leads people on these curated adventure trips. We want to do, and it. Uh, it In the United States. It could be City Slicker-esque. It could be, it could be full cowboy. It could be mules going down into the Grand Canyon, staying at the bottom and coming back up. It could be it a could big be a raft. It could be a dude ranch. I mean, it, if we want to go full, full city, city, city would, slickers, then I would need to watch. You know, I watched Top Gun, uh, the original, just because so I Get could watch the new, the new one. one. I could do the same thing for City Slickers for the next right thing. So with. I was like, can we do a rafting trip down through the, the Grand, Canyon. Grand Canyon? But then we look at how big those boats are. We want something private or semi-private, yeah. and we want it to be rustic. We don't want mixed company here. But yet we want it to be posh. We want it to be taken care of. We want to almost die, but live the most life we've ever lived. And we want to do it with our college buddies, and we want you to make it happen. Yeah. So I guess so just use let hashtag, us know. hashtag Ear Biscuits on Twitter to either. We've never solicited. Point us in the right direction. So hard for something. But listen again. I'm gonna it could be right Alaska. Now. I. It needs to be in the. Continental. You got to be legit no. though. It needs to be in the U.S. Like you got to be legit. I don't mean like I've been camping. Don't waste uh, our time. Don't waste our time. Don't waste our time. And we won't waste yours. Okay. But it. It needs to be over a long weekend. You do this for a living, let's okay? Give, let's give more parameters. It needs to be over a, like, a weekend. We, we flew in on Friday and we flew back on a Monday. That's what it needs to be. It needs so to be it, a four day it weekend. Needs, it needs to be like a so the, the two Saturday day, and two the Sunday is the, is the stuff. So it's, stuff is. we're kind of limited in that way, okay? So we're counting on you, mythical beast in, in uh, connected places. Somebody's got it. I mean, this yeah. is a thing that people do. If we don't start cashing in on our fame now, yeah, we got to do something. What, what, yeah. we're, we're gonna, what are we gonna do? Right. I'm just a common man. I drive a common van. My dog don't have a pedigree. Who sings that? John Connolly. Who's that? He's a country singer from like the '80s. Well, I guess I don't know him. If I had my way, I'm gonna stay that way. <laughs> Other highlights for me. We can't be common anymore, Rhett. Um, you gotta live it up. I really, first of all, I did enjoy that dinner we had and we were in our, our waitress uh, was a mythical beast, Emily. And uh, that was a situation where we came in the restaurant to celebrate Tim's birthday and Emily was a mythical beast and said, follow me, I'll, I'll be your server. And uh, Pick me. 
was an incredible, She not only was she an incredible uh, waiter, but she also told us that we should go hang out in Golden. And we made the mistake of not planning anything our second day. I just thought we were gonna lounge at the house and just look at each other and say, wow, it's so good to see you. But it turns out everybody we, wanted the, we it, wanted to do more. The taste of adventure. Golden, Colorado, um, you can take a tour of the Coors Brewing Facility, but you gotta make a reservation like six months in advance and <laughs> yeah, that, it can't be worth it. Right, I mean. What, I mean. There, it, at the end of the day, it's Coors. Clear, you know what I'm saying? Like, cl- clear no creek. matter how, how awesome this is, at the end of the day, it's a Coors. I'm sorry. I like it for what it is, but I didn't reserve anything. Right. And I don't, and I won't. Right. Clear Creek uh, runs through Golden, and there's tubing that happens. Like, there's like, I mean, this is like the bustling little town. It's like a cute, nice little town. And um, people can rent tubes or bring your own tube, and you can either take a shuttle or you can walk along the creek through the middle of town and just put in like a few miles up and pe- and there's like, it's rapids. It's, oh yeah. And there were still a few people with beverages in their hands when they were going down, but at a few points it's like, your beverage is gonna be spilt. But, but there it just were goes into the a lot of people, and then and it the, goes straight into the course plant. The water was not. We didn't. We didn't uh, do the tubing. We thought about it, but we we were like, we got on clothes to like hang out here for the rest of the day. We don't want to smell like the creek and then trying to hang out at a beer joint. So so we did what we did in Aspen, which has become a tradition now. You rent electric bikes and you ride it along the river. The boys didn't know about this. Like we had, to, it was, it felt like a silver bullet, like a revelation. Yeah. You know, when we're like, we're gonna, we're gonna ride e-bikes. Cause once you know that there's a body of water running through a, um, a an outdoorsy town. In a path next to it. Yeah, Smooth especially with people path. tubing. Smooth. It's like, you know there's gonna be e-bikes. We found them, we did like a, e-bikes are freaking fun. They are more fun, I think, than scooters because you can go further, especially in this instance. Like mm-hmm. on on our tours, we would always do scooters in whatever town we were in. And so like for city navigation, it's fun. Yeah. But when you're in like a rustic town with like a river or a stream, you wanna cover more ground. And I think the e-bike is the way to go. It's a nice, fun, high speed, um, tour. It was definitely a highlight. We saw a freaking, was it a mountain goat? It was a bighorn sheep. Bighorn sheep, We saw dude. a bighorn sheep. Just sitting up there on the I ridge. I think that's kind of uncommon. We we got to the end of the path, and by, the, by this time we're like in a canyon and we're on the outside of town. It's beautiful, like the way that they've laid this place out, like the, the hiking pass and like the biking pass, it's just like, They've done great planning. And we had to turn around and I just happened to look up and against silhouetted against the the ridge line is this bighorn sheep just he was kind of leaning over like but you got the perfect what are, outline of his horse look like middle-aged boys from college. It it definitely had a nature like if we had anything other than our phones we could have gotten some I think we got just a couple of pictures that we're, we're now showing you. We wouldn't have seen him if he wasn't silhouetted on the on the ridge. But I think that was pretty uncommon. It's uncommon to see those things that close in a town. I've never seen one. I've never seen one. What have now? Elk are very common there. You you guys were flipping out, but Yep. I th- saw an elk and I was like, "Well, that's uncommon." And then I saw like seven more elk on the way to Yeah. uh the house. Uh, one of the things that so I I, re- I recommend Golden. I recommend tubing. They got an RV park right there by the thing, and like if you got young kids and you just want to take them tubing, it's like it seems like a really cool spot to just hang out. One of the things that I noticed, and now having been to Colorado two times in a short period of time, the the apparel. <laughs> yeah. So there, yeah. there is a Colorado style, and again, I've been to I would, Aspen. I wouldn't call it style. So it doesn't matter how rich you are. You wear, you look like you could do the following things and you would be ready for it. Eat a croissant, have a coffee, maybe take a phone call, mm-hmm. hike a very long ways, 
ride a bike, ride on the back of a big horn sheep. Like you can do all right. those things with what you're wearing. Take a in the woods. It's like tight athleisure wear. Athleisure wear, yeah. And it is a thing and they all wear it. And it's not, I mean, I mean, some of the ladies, you know, I, it, I, it, it, I would say that it's working for them, in my opinion. Um, but it isn't necessarily fashion forward, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not, it, yeah, I didn't see, it wasn't a lot of that like hipster athleisure, like I'm going camping, but I dropped thousands of dollars to look right to do it. It's, no. it's a lot more practical it's than like that. It's like this clothing will dry very quickly. Yeah, and it's. And it's, it's aerodynamic. It, and it doesn't really draw attention to itself. Like everything, you it's know. It's all muted colors, blacks. You, you know, if you go grays. down into Hollywood or Beverly Hills or any cool spot, Silver Lake, anywhere, you know, people wearing stuff to to express themselves, to draw attention to themselves. Yeah, you can't really like, express yourself with this stuff. Everybody's just really trying to optimize their performance. It could, I mean, let's, I mean, let's be honest, it might be the future of clothing because it is the I most. I like expressing myself, It man. is the most like Star Trek clothing of any clothing choices. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think of it that way, but I, yeah, you're if right. If you see futuristic clothing in a movie, it's usually form-fitting, tight, looks like it would dry very quickly, it's breathable. Mm -hmm. uh, Repel bullets yeah. and rain. Maybe I maybe they they understand something that we don't. Because we definitely don't forget look like the nice a couple, hatch to shit. We look like dudes from LA who are in Colorado. With three guys from other places. Yeah. No offense, guys. We're not the same. Greg had a Gre I'll come back to that. <laughs> Greg has a little bit of uh athleisure. Athleisure wear, like some high tech. He he had the he actually had uh shoes, shoes. for rafting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he has another friend named Rhett. Yeah. That we all should. Drags him somewhere to do stuff. It's, like, it's, it's Everyone should have a, a friend named Rhett to drag him places. Right. And get, and it's like, I gotta buy special shoes for this? A highlight for me was watching the home videos. You know, when I digitized the stuff yeah. that went on the Mythical Society, it was like the never before seen stuff we're putting over there. I also dug up these home video, like, we had the video camera around our apartment and you know it was me, you and Greg and then the next year Tim moved in and we would just pick that thing up and film us. We weren't making videos. Well actually sometimes we were making video, like comedy sketches just for ourselves that no one would ever see but usually it was just like we would turn it on, point it at somebody and they would just start dancing. Or you'd point it, like somebody was on the toilet and then you'd, you walk in there and film them. A lot of people sitting on toilets, a couple of times guys in showers, um, and a lot of dancing. With You might need to explain yourself a little bit here. People might get the wrong idea, Link. I th uh, get whatever idea you want. I mean, I don't know why we did it, but we were, we were just, it was slice of life, man. It felt so freeing. Felt freeing. You know. But it was so fun to like sit down and watch I mean, we probably watched an hour of footage. More than that. And <laughs> I'd say we watched two hours. And then, I don't know if it was related to that or the night before, but it just occurred to me when we were sitting around talking one night, and it was like, you know what? It's, it's, it's a special thing that we have, like being, like we have this bond that we formed in our college years where you're like, you're forming who you are. And you, I mean, we were forming so much of our worldview and our purpose and where we were headed in life and what we what we believed. But that, uh, and of course, a lot of that stuff has changed. And then on top of that, you know, uh, we're internet famous. And so all of these questions that I think I have in the back of my mind um, I realized that I had the perfect opportunity with this group of guys to like gain some data here. And it really boiled down to one question, which I asked. I was like, you know what, we were so close then, I'm so glad that like we reconnected, we stayed connected enough over the years to like fully reconnect and spend this weekend together. 
am I different? <laughs> am I a different person than I was back then? And I really wanted to know. I was actually, I think it more so, as I said it, I realized that it was like, that that question went pretty deep for me. And uh, the immediate response was like, just like a, a grinning and sh like people shaking their heads, like no, you're not different. And it felt so good to me. Like it was just like, that was my favorite moment. Uh, having, you know, having people that knew me back then that still know me now that I trust completely and um, to, that I know will shoot straight. You know, I knew it wasn't lip service because you know, you have people who make assumptions for whatever reasons. It's like, okay, you you moved to California, you changed your beliefs, you this, that, and the other. You're not the same person you were. You let X, Y, and Z things change you, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and it's one thing to get that from your family, like from my mama. It's like, I know, I can tell that my mom still loves me and she's still proud of me and she doesn't, she's not like looking at me like, what happened to you? You know, but it's a different thing with friends who are like they have every right, and in that moment they would have said, "I believe," like you know what? Yeah, you're you're different, dude, but still the same in some way. You know, it was it was an unequivocal. No, you're the same person, and it just uh, to use the parlance, it ministered to my soul. Oh. I, I I I felt like I needed to hear that. Are you afraid that you've changed? I guess so, you know, because because we do get that messaging from people who don't. Some people don't have busy saying it. Well, I or think what you it. were saying, what you were asking, because all of us, without exception, have changed in so many ways, in a lot of ways, right? But I think the question you were asking is like, am I essentially the same person? Yeah. Um. Which I think am is I actually, yeah. which is. Which That's me, what I ask, am I a different person? To me, that speaks to the reason that there's not a, um, I think we can have very fruitful, even fun conversations about things that we disagree on because the conversation is happening from person to person. Let me kind of explain what I mean by that. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, of course, this is something that I think about a lot, is the whole premise of the first song from the James and the Shame Project about believe me, like take me at my word, actually. It, it, I, I, yeah, exactly. And, and I had a, uh, and I talked a lot about in our deconstruction stories that like, I think what ultimately everyone is after is just see the humanity in people. You want you, you want someone to, see you for who you are and see the humanity. But when you are completely steeped in your ideology, you put it up as a shield and that's the thing that kind of defines who you are. And that's the thing I respect so much about these guys, right? Um, obviously, they're coming from a different place and they have come to different conclusions. Now, and I'll also- Let's say places, I, you know, yeah, they're yeah, not all in the yeah, exact and same I, And place. I'll also say that, uh, Every single one of them in their own way has had very deep uh, considerations about their their worldview and their fate. It's like, it's a very, it's not some like, oh, these guys just believe this because of where they're from or whatever. It's like, yeah, they have a- Thoughtful. It's a thoughtful approach to the conclusions that they have come to. We've ended up in different places for myriad reasons. But then we can come back and we can have these conversations where it is a human talking to another human. Whereas so many of the interactions that you can have with someone of faith, and also someone who is of a faith that you used to be of, is that it is a conversation with a project, right? It's like, this person is a project. This person, the person who has left the flock, is in the wrong, has to be corrected, has to be brought back into or the even, right relationship. Or even loved back into it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, if, you know. If the, if the, if sort of the premise or the, the foundation of your relationship is one of 
trying to bring them in, trying to bring them back to Changing essentially them. agree with you, then that influences the entire conversation and the relationship. And I, honestly, if these guys saw us in that way, we wouldn't be like, yeah, let's go hang out and have a weekend together. No. Because I can't, I, listen, I'm not. No. I'm not gonna be your project, and I don't want you to be my project, because I'm not trying to change their minds about anything either. So I think that the really interesting thing is that we can have these conversations that are real, that are honest, that are that are you know no hold, holds barred in a lot of ways, but also it's just like there's no offense and there's no def, there's no defense, there's no defensiveness, yeah, because we're connecting on a personal level, and. And we all. That's all you can ask of somebody. Because we've all, well, I would say you and I have definitely, and probably the other guys too, I know that we all in our college experience have had moments of like making people into projects, like trying to trying to persuade or change people's minds and that that is like the main through line of the relationship. It's like, this carrot that's dangling out there, this ulterior motive beyond just being friends. You know, that's 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 a complication um, or a potential side effect of having evangelistic mindset, right? Is that that's the main motive of a friendship. Yeah. And ironically, it's something that we were trying to address from the inside out uh, when we worked in Campus Crusade at, at times and also with like things that we were developing <laughs> in terms of things that we talked about. But I guess my point is we we've all been on that side of it. So like we're ve- I think we're v- we're very sensitive to it. Like you know when it's happening because we used to do it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So now it's like a magician suddenly doing tricks in a group of magicians. Yeah, we it's all like, Oh, you're doing We all kind of know you're what doing the thing that we all know how to that, do. That that would never work. And I don't, you know, it, over the pandemic, having all those video calls and the conversation, we would talk about all the spiritual stuff, but then we would also move on. And then at times there'd be like pointed questions, but it, the pointed questions would never be from a, persu- a point of persuasion. They would be from a point of curiosity and care. Yeah. So, and you, because we could sniff out anything else, any of us could. So I think that laid a groundwork for uh, us to have such a great weekend and for us to have great f- active relationships now. Um, I think another piece of it, even it, so totally remove this, this this spiritual journey part of it. There's something, I mean it's just special to have these college friends like, I've heard of people who've had this, like even my, my Aunt TC, like she's got her group of, I think it's high school friends who they still get together and hang out like, Every year or so, you know, it's really cool. You you see those things happening. Uh, you hear about oh, I'm getting together with my girls or my boys from from way back when. Um, there's something special with that type of friendship that if it's lasted that long, and then there was just an ease to it, like it was not complicated. What we've had, we've made friends, really close friends that then things have fizzled out or things change. You know, you go through friends yeah. Yeah. over time. And like, I really value the friends I have now and we could have a great time going on a trip and I think that there's complete trust and, but it's something different about, and even in like, the most vibrant of friendships and I think it's because we lost friends. Maybe that's what's behind this for me. We lost close friends, you know, over the past six years or whatever. That there's something a little bit. It it plants something that's a little bit tenuous. Oh, there's a tenuous nature. Like this may not last forever. As good as this is, it may not last forever. But then I feel like that's totally gone with this group of guys because it's been so long, and it's it's just about and, and it was so uncomplicated for us to hang out that weekend that that there's zero question in my mind that it's gonna be something we wanna do again and because it's not loaded and there's no question marks. I think it's just, we I, just have fun, I think a lot know? of it has to do with 
friendships that are formed in those really pivotal moments in your life and in you know college is one of them right I, I i always talk about it and i and you know i know that things have changed so much just as a society and as a country and college is so hard to afford and like you can't it, so many people can't have that experience but essentially whatever's happening to you between the ages of 18 to 21 to 22 is so significant that whoever you are in close friendships with at that point uh there's a great chance that you're gonna, you're, you know, the good, the good ones you're gonna stay in touch with, and you're gonna be able to step back into that because you all changed together in a in a really accelerated way that you'll never change again for the rest of your life, as much as you changed during that time. Yeah, I, I just, I wish that for my kids. I see that Lily's got a group of friends, actually high school friends that like she's still, yeah, getting together high school with. Friends is, it's common to happen um, as well. So. That makes me so happy that like I think this is a good group of people. They're good people, you know. They're not. They're not a wreck. There's not drama, you know. It's like it's hard. It's hard to not have drama. That's the thing you learn with. Like you get teenagers and their friendships. Good God, I mean, not even. I mean, preteens. So much yeah. more. So much drama. Yeah. You know, and if you can if you can find a place where there's little to no drama. You can build connection. I mean, it could it could last for twenty two years, and 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 counting in our case. And I, it, you know, it's a cliche. In fact, even my mom said this on the phone when I talked to her the other day. She was like, "And I bet y'all picked up right where you left off." <laughs> and then that is that's how some of those friendships start. My mom uh, gets together with her college roommates every year. Every year since college, has gotten together with them. Really, like I think there's like four or five of them that were like sweet mates or or whatever. But what do they, they go to a water park? Uh, it depends on you know, it depends. Yeah, mostly water parks. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, of course, uh, the, the pandemic uh, put a wrench in that. But so I don't know the last time that they did it. But you know that is yeah. It's, it, she, she she understood. Like I'm, I she, she saw us together in some of the pictures and on she's, Facebook. I think. Yeah, and she's like, I, you know, I know exactly what that's like to get together with you know, your old friends in that way. And you you basically, like you know, like with her, there was a nickname, her her, her uh, maiden name was Cowan, and somebody had mispronounced it, they call her like Callan, I think. And so they're just like, that's what her name is with them, right? She's got like her own name with them. And- That's cute. And so you just kinda like, you return to this place of like, before life got complicated, you know, yeah, the, and so you kind of step back into that, and also it helps when, you know, we're all basically dealing with. I mean, we're in different S- same places, stage of life, but same stage of life. Like we've all been married twenty years, yeah. We've all got children, multiple multiple children, children. yeah. Um, and so it's just like you those things right there. You immediately have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, in terms of life stage, in a way that we don't often, doesn't often happen. I mean, some of our closest friends here in LA are, uh, you know, similar life stage, been married the same amount of time, uh, kids of a, of a similar age, but that's kind of uncommon in LA. First of all, it's uncommon in LA to meet somebody our age who's been married for 20 years. Like that does, we always surprise people, 20, yep. 21 years now. Um, and also somebody our age who has kids our age. Yeah. You know, you kind of have to go back to people who came from where you came from and were on the same track. Graduate high school, graduate college, get married, have children. That's the track. And there's not a lot of people out here who are on that track. So it, it, it's it's cool to, to connect with people who kind of made all those same types of decisions. It was a success. It was, uh, it was life-giving. Especially because no one died uh, on a boat. Uh, but if somebody had almost died, that would have been so great. This podcast would have been that much more entertaining, and that's why I'm gonna say again: Is this your wreck? If you're a legitimate guide out there, oh, who can make us feel like we're gonna die? Okay, I don't actually want to. I want to feel like I might could die. But I'd also like, a, like a nice, nice meal. Do good dinners would be great, and then. Um, you know, it, it, 
I guess I, I I'd like a mattress, honestly. I need an, like an air air mattress situation. Yeah. I need you know I don't do well if I'm sleeping on the ground. In hammocks, I can't really get comfortable in those. So we play can't. hard, sleep great. That's yeah, 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 yeah. We, we're really looking for like a glamping situation. Play hard, eat hard, sleep serious hard. Serious you know? perceived peril during the day. Right. Perceived peril. Like if there's gonna be a grizzly bear, it's trained. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know who you are. Okay. Hashtag ear biscuits. Uh, co- I'm gonna, I've got two wrecks. The first wreck is I want to remind you about Good Mythical Evening because it's going to be a good time. GoodMythicalEvening.com. Get your tickets. It's live exclusively on Moment House. Second wreck is Get your tickets. Uh, as is not uncommon on this podcast, we will talk about something that people were talking about uh, months ago that we discovered because we're middle aged dads. Uh, but you may also be a person who didn't watch this the first time around, and that is that Nick Cage movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, I think is the name of it, the one with Pedro Pascal. Yeah. It was, a, it was a delight. Well, it was a delight. I'll have to see it. Yeah, I would say that and then City Slickers. Okay. Maybe you do a double, double matinee. And as always, if you wanna let us know a response, a correction, a question, any type of interaction, you can call us and leave a voicemail. one 888 one Talk at you next week. What's up, Rhett and Link? Um, don't know if you guys want to hear me say this, but my dad is a Southern man, born and reared in Texas, and he, in fact, spent many mornings in his tidy whities in front of his family of six. When I was younger, since my family are all immigrants from Austria, it's like Austrian culture for everyone in the house to always like be naked unless you're gonna go out. So my whole childhood, I was running around naked with my siblings, with my mom, my dad, everyone was just naked in the house all the time. Once I started going through puberty, I realized how weird that was, and I was like, nope, never doing that again. And so now I'm the only one in my household who's not naked. Hey, Rhett and Link, this is Katie. Um, I was just listening to your episode about Rhett's terrible vacation. I wanted to empathize. I also just got back from North Carolina uh, on a beach trip with my family, and after the first two days, I got COVID too, and I had to stay inside the entire time away from my family and not on the beach. So Rhett, you're not the only one who had a terrible vacation this summer in North Carolina. Hi Rhett and Link, my name's Elise. I live in Ohio and I am absolutely obsessed with whales. So Rhett's story about whale watching, being on an ear biscuit was the absolute best crossover of my life. Thanks for talking about my obsession, bye. Hey, in case you missed it, we launched a new collection over at psych.la. Everything we release over there, all the products and apparel, change right before your eyes, so check it out. And we're giving you a discount code to use on your first visit. Shop psych.la, drop in EB Made You Look at checkout and enjoy 10% off your whole purchase. EB Made You Look. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.